Yeah. You were living in a dirty Just... apartment with mice in it. What it mice? You idiot. What mice? That Where, apartment. You said mice in my apartment. Jasmine's a liar. We all know it. But do you ever get the feeling that Gino's making things up too? Because I'm not sure I believe him. And right now, the state of his house is doing real damage to his relationship. When in all the places I live, you have seen a bathroom like this, where you have the moles, the the germs, that black that oh, no, I don't know what no. it is. So we left Gino and Jasmine last week after a fight that left Jasmine open and exposed. She revealed that she suffers from some intense self-esteem issues. And yeah, while we probably all knew that anyway, what we didn't know was that she also suffers from alopecia. And unfortunately, she's woken up this morning with a bad rash all over her body. I look at myself in the mirror, it was super red and I got scared like, what is this? Like, look, it's getting worse. Now, whilst Jasmine is frantically itching all over, Gino is pretty unbothered. Apparently, Jasmine's had this kind of rash before, and he thinks it's nothing too serious, it's nothing to worry about. But Jasmine insists that it's worse than ever. So Detective Gino is on the case. Perhaps it's because of something she ate. Well, how much almonds did you eat? That's it's weird. maybe not why the it's almonds. worse. Almonds. You time. want me to tell you that it's the almonds, but it is not the almonds, baby. Jasmine insists that she's not allergic to nuts, and I'm inclined to believe her. The woman's vegan. She probably eats a lot of nuts, and judging by how health conscious she is, she's likely to be careful about what she puts in her body. But once the thought has passed through Gino's head, he has real trouble letting it go. Maybe it no. was the blankets, like the soap you wash it with. No, not the dust. If it was the dust, you'd have been sick every day. I'm gonna go see the almonds that you've eaten. Just look at Jasmine's face. It's screaming, it's not the f***ing almonds, Gino. Now, this isn't the first time that we've suspected that Gino might be on the spectrum. But watching this play out is just more proof. And it's not long before the conversation turns into a disagreement. Jasmine blames the cleanliness of the house, whereas Gino fixates on the almonds. He just refuses to admit that his home might not be clean. I would describe a dirty house as like one of those homes like you have a hoarder in it and they got piles of garbage all over the place. That's dirty in my eyes. That's pretty alarming, isn't it? Look, I don't want to judge the man's house, but for once, I think Jasmine isn't being dramatic. Look at the state of the toilet, for God's sake. Anyone that suffers from skin conditions like dermatitis or eczema knows that dust and mold can trigger a breakout. And I do believe that what is causing this is that like the house is very dirty. This house is clean. Babe, okay. this is not. This Listen. makes sense to me. Hold on, didn't this man quit his job to spend his time making sure that Jasmine was comfortable in his home? She's literally expressing exactly what she needs and it's not that big of a request for once. She just wants a clean house. But Gino's shaking his head at her audacity. How dare she? He just point blank refuses to accept that his house is at fault when, according to him, he's seen Jasmine live in far worse. You were living in a dirty just... apartment with mice in it. What mice, you idiot? What mice? That Where, apartment. Where did you say mice in my apartment? This conversation has derailed from the main point. Gino's now just defending the state of his home. Now, perhaps it's because he's embarrassed at how it's being portrayed to the world, but he's lashing out at Jasmine. He's trying to embarrass her like he's been embarrassed. Only Jasmine isn't having any of it. When in all the places I live, you have seen a bathroom like this, where you have the moles, the the germs, that black that oh, no, I don't know what no. it is. Now, over the seasons, we've seen Jasmine live in numerous different homes, and each of them have looked, at least from the outside looking in, they've all looked clean and tidy. Now, on the flip side of that, every time we've seen Gino's home, it's always looked dirty. It's always looked like a bachelor's pad. 
So I'm really having trouble believing Gino in this case. But thankfully, for once, Jasmine doesn't want to fight. She diffuses the situation and she tries to reason with Gino instead. Forget about the allergic reaction, forget about anything. Just for me to feel like I'm home, That's, this is home to me. I need your help. Jasmine's asking, in fact she's begging, that Gino just take more care in keeping the house clean. She's begging him to buy some new bedding. And whilst we all know that Gino hates change, eventually he caves. He starts by taking Jasmine to urgent care to get some shots for her rash. And we join them the next day as he takes her out shopping. How often do you recommend to change the pillows? I replace mine about every six months. Every six months. Now, while Jasmine and the lady at the store both agree that changing pillows once every six months is recommended, Gino jokes that he's more a once every six years kind of guy. But knowing what his house is like, that might not actually be a joke. I mean, there's mysterious black stuff growing in his house. Frankly, it's disgusting. And as the pair continue to shop, Jasmine sees a blanket with a soccer ball design. And that makes her think of her son. But my plan is to bring my kids here once I'm settled and sure that Gino and I are gonna make it. Now, Jasmine's mentioned on numerous occasions that before bringing her kids over to the States, she first wants to lay the foundations. She wants to set up her own life. She wants to find out more about their schooling. But the fact that she's only been in the States for a few days and they haven't even had one of their major, major fights yet, but already she's talking like this, she's already talking about the prospect of their relationship not working out, makes you question if the breaking point here is Gino's house. Look, the truth is, Jasmine is really emotional. Why? Well, she reveals this will be the very first time that she misses her son's birthday. I mean, I know you can't be there this time, but the good news is eventually we should be able to bring him here, right? Right. So that's positive. But Gino, you quit your job, remember? Sponsoring her kids to come over is going to be difficult without employment, without an income. And it seems like Jasmine has realised this. She doesn't know how long the visa process will take. And she's terrified. This whole process, the fact that his mum has left him to move to another country, might cause her son real lifelong trauma. She really doesn't want him to feel abandoned. I don't want to cause any trauma on him. I don't want to mess up with, like, up this kid, you know, that I'm responsible for and he's so good and I feel sometimes that I don't deserve him. Jasmine's really missing her kids. I think that much is obvious. And don't forget, she's admitted in the past that she herself has abandonment issues because her dad left her as a child. So it's only natural that she's now having doubts about whether or not she's a good mum. Now, I know there's a lot of strong opinions on this, and obviously leaving your kids in another country doesn't make you a good mum. But the situation here is a bit more complicated. Like, she's doing this in the hopes of giving her kids a better future, a better life. And whether that's right or wrong, I guess that's a debate for another day. But for now, all Gino can do is comfort her. He suggests that they should have a video call with Juanse to make Jasmine feel better. Papá Gino y yo vamos a estar presentes, pero en el teléfono, pero vamos a estar allí para cantarte tú. Once años! Once yeah. años! Look, I think we can all agree that Jasmine has a lot of flaws, but right now watching this, I don't think there's any doubt that she is genuinely heartbroken at the prospect of missing her son's birthday. It's not easy, but she's doing everything she can from thousands of miles away to let him know that he is loved. And she's crossing her fingers, she's hopeful that everything she's doing is for the best. That is, if it works out. I feel super happy, super excited about the K2 visa for my children. At the same time, I cannot stop being worried because I'm scared of something happening. It really feels like Jasmine's having serious doubts about her future. She's suddenly questioning whether or not her and Gino will work. Now, is that because Michigan isn't what she imagined for herself? Is Gino's house the problem, maybe? 
Or perhaps it's linked to his lack of employment now. Whatever the truth, I think we're now starting to see that her kids are going to play a very large role in this. In fact, the longer she's apart from them, the more it's going to leave her questioning everything.